now it should probably kick in. Let's see. Yep, there it goes. Yep. Okay. Now, if I want to share a link, I guess I could just share. Hmm. I can just go to my channel. And it's probably right on top. There it is. All right. So if anybody wants to help uh, with questions, like and Al, you want to be you want to be the question r relay guy. Uh, there's a link, and then you can mute it there because you can hear me here. You don't want to have to hear sound. And then uh, no, as I'm just going to listen. All right. Well, does Rigo, do you want to be the sound? Uh, okay. I'll just look every once in a while. No, I um, I gotta head off in a few minutes later. So okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So <clears throat> while we're letting people get a chance to join the stream, I'm gonna export another model here. So oh, you want you want someone to look at what people are posting and tell you what the question is? Is that what? You like want? say, okay, we have a new question, yeah. and then take a look, and then I'll look. All like right. just remind I, I me. Do, I can do. I yeah. can do some of that. In just a minute. Yeah. There's only oh it's actually up to four watching but they, it could just be people from here too you never know <laughs> so who knows um, okay I'm trying to get a export uh, done because. While we're doing the stream here, I'm trying to get the models all caught up because it takes quite a while to get all the uh, models exported. And then we're going to check them here. So this is going to be the PMS 50 LOD1. Which model am I in right now? I'm in, Okay, let's jump into the PMS 50. That's another thing I need to look into. Why? Well, that's probably because I'm doing a resync, so it wouldn't matter. Because when you start the flight, I don't think you would s <clears throat> see this uh, page that was pr presently showing show up like that. So let's enable the passengers. and they're showing okay now let's go turn on the LOD tester here and we'll put a, a filter for 414 so I don't see everything else in the game and we will go to interior so this is interior LOD 1 and as I zoom out that's two. So basically, do we need to see the passengers from this distance? Yay? Nay? Anybody? I mean, I could, the pilot, you know, we already have him showing here. It's a pretty big window in the front and the side, but these little tiny windows on the side, I mean... Yeah, that may not be obvious. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be necessary to put them in that LOD. And then they're pretty heavy on polys, so that will help, like, your friend who's, like, taxiing right behind you. So he doesn't have to get nailed with all the, uh, with all the memory. You can see right here. See how they're disappearing? You can hardly tell. You would never know. So I think we'll just stick with two LODs for now.
So Joe wanted to mention that we probably should put like a different type of message here so that people don't just think that's the range you're going to get with the airplane because that's never going to happen, right? Because when you do flights, wind is everything with distance, <laughs> uh, which probably most of you are aware of. Uh, so... Yeah, try doing a long flight in a headwind and then see what your distance is compared to a tailwind. <laughs> uh, based on the amount of fuel that you had loaded. So, you know, and I just told Joe, I says, well, the 1140 in the, in the, in the um, POH is already c using a number call based off of what they call like a standard, which I think is like what? zero wind and uh, nice nice weather right so I would just assume that people would just know that typically that's 1140 and in based on <laughs> you know it's it's up to you to figure out the real amount of fuel that you need for your flight <laughs> so they, they used to call the standard day yeah so that's all yeah that's all this range is going to do this is the standard day range based on the amount of fuel you're putting in so it's up to you to say well look at the weather today and then they have to determine because joe said when he the first thing he does is when he figures out his amount of fuel that he needs for a flight is he never looks at the distance he looks at the uh wait what was it that, yeah so he looks at uh time yeah the time and uh and the winds he doesn't really use distance. It's how much time is going to be flying. So if it takes this amount of time to fly from this air to air, this airport to that airport, plus you have these headwinds, and he adds that together and they, they figures out his method for his fuel. I was like, oh, that's that's pretty complicated. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's easy once you do it a, a hundred times, but I would have uh, never never thought of it like that. Call it max range standard standard day. All right, here's the here's the new cargo in the back. So here's the original uh, strap system here, which we actually updated the. Uh, how come I can't? Oh, here we go. We actually updated um, this pin right here. It wasn't there before because um, I had not actually designed it correctly, and now. You'll see why with the pin is there, because with the luggage here, and look at the detail on this box. It's, it's, this is not painted like that. That's actually modeled with the fold on the box and stuff. This is amazing. Um, yeah, and the reason for the pin there is because that's for this. Didn't see any box? Oh, now there's box. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, if you're watching the stream, like. You can just look there every once in a while to see if people have questions, but you can watch live in Discord to see the, um, to so you don't have a delay. The people in that are just watching the stream, they're fine because they don't notice the delay because they're listening to the audio there. So you don't want to watch. You don't want to watch the stream. <clears throat> okay. So that means I think I got one more export to do and I'm done. This is good. So let's turn off the 750, turn on the 530. So there's a couple, uh, a new feature we can add uh, that I might do. I haven't decided yet, but um, pulling the control surface back. Um, uh, unlocks the rudder lock so you would remove this to, re to unlock it and then you can go like that whoops and then go like oh hold on I, my I have a question I have yeah a question when you're ready yeah okay fellas asking if you could change if you could change navigation systems based on the uh, clicking something on the tablet versus having to go and change delivery this has come up before yeah, so there's conflicts that can happen. Like, for example, you're technically not supposed to have TDS running at the same time PMS 50 is running. So to have those in the same panel, 
um, those are going to be running at the same time and so you're going to go have to disable one now technically even with it being in separate panels I found you can get away with having both of them run, but the truth is with the PMS50, you really do need to shut down the TDS50, so you need to come over here and shut it down. Um, but yeah, you're also running, um, you're still telling both of those to run. <laughs> I don't know, it, it, it also makes it more difficult for me, the developer, to, um, like it's already been like crazy just getting through this beta right now and if i would have had this all as one it would have even been more of a nightmare um having them as three separate panels makes it a little bit lighter of a load for me to uh to keep things separate and to be um, clear mark when you say separate panels you mean you have to go change the livery yeah you have to go load a different livery exactly yeah, yeah. um so and, and by having them on the same one, technically, they're still there. They're just invisible. And so you have to write all this special code to now hide each one while the other one's showing. And it's already complicated on what we're doing with these anyways. So, I mean, is it, like, impossible? No, we've done it before. But um, it's just it's just not worth it. And then it, it, it just means I have a more of a chance to release another update and then everybody's complaining because it's broken. And then I, it's like, oh, I made a mistake. Because it's hard the, to catch. The answer is, not in the near future is the answer. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's just... Another question? It's just there's too many reasons to not do it. And there also could be a conflict. Mo the most important one is, is that there could be a conflict with the software running at the same time. Um and because they're all using different autopilot systems even our 530 is using different ones than this that's another problem um you can't i can't well, do all, i i couldn't okay. do all three panels on one anyways mm -hmm. you could only do the 750s on the same one because the 530 is using uh different configs different panel configs so again um it wouldn't even be possible it's 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 got different codes so um Yep. Wouldn't it also lower the performance of the computer? Like it would train more FPS if they all were on top of each other. Yes. And that's the other thing is we're already like don't want to have the FPS as low as it is because of the quality and it, and so much going on that that would even it would it would probably be worse, yes. Mark another question. But maybe not. Who it, it depends. Yeah. Will there be an option for Navigraph in the EFB at any point? They want to display Navigraph charts in the EFB. Oh, EFBR. yeah. They're asking, will that be an option, they're asking. Yeah. I think that's what they're asking. Yeah, I think someone brought that up to me, too, be, uh, before. It's I don't think it's something hard to do. So if it's easy, I, I, I don't see why we can't. So maybe some, uh, an update after release, after official release. And Navigraph is uh, there was somewhat there was an advantage to it because you can, I mean it's it's basically like having one of the screens that one of these 750s have right where you could like get information from it directly or it shows you a, it shows you charts approach charts oh yeah stars. and so it's who who's subscription, subscription oh so you have to be subscribed for it to work is in other words it'd be for yeah, third party yeah, yeah. Oh. you have to, you have to buy it yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I don't. Uh, you know, it sounds like it would be pretty easy, or it's not. Depend depending if they offer this uh, app to be added here. Um, I'm obviously not going to write it from scratch. So maybe the company already offers it to to be uh, added to third party planes. So if it is another question, some of the new features you're showing on the tablet that's going to be in the release you're going to do later today. Right? Yes. Yeah. This is all going to be here today all these passengers all the new autopilots are there this is the new autopilot uh the the gfc 600 this is um i mean it's not different well it's different than the one before but this is a uh, a fully new one that al and i have put together written in html um that is now every button but the level button is um can be assigned by the default assignments in the sim so um, and including the uh, 
alerter right here so you can see my hardware here and, and is adjusting this. You can do it you can do the level button with some third party software. I've done it with FSU IPC for example. And there's what, access and O's and uh, so I noticed the I noticed the limitation today, Al. Yep. Since we have our new we call default autopilot with our <laughs> realistic display, um, if you want to do IAS mode, I found that you really still have to have the alerter higher if you want to climb and lower if you want to descend. So I can't wait for a Sobo to um, step up and make it so we can arm and disarm this thing. Because now we could go back and put our arming switch there to fix that situation. But then here's the downsides. You're going back to using mouse again. You got to use, you know, you, you have to have special software to sign here. Um, you still have to use the mouse to arm it here. So right now we've got it all but that level button completely default. And uh, I prefer that. So... <clears throat> but that's like some of the advanced systems. If you had a G1000 or something, you put an you put an altitude at the top of the altitude tape. That's armed. Yeah, but there's but no, I there's noticed no arming but there's no arming button in the G1000. Yeah, example. our old autopilot we had a problem where if we like um, wanted to climb, we had to have the altitude higher than us in VS or lower than us. But uh, in this apparently they have fixed that because this is uh, using a new K event and um, it doesn't matter where the alerter is you can just climb or descend but for some reason IAS is is not doing the same logic as this one so I just hope they fix that because if if the altitude is below us here this thing doesn't like to climb I'll, I'll demonstrate that here in a minute because it's it's quite annoying a fellow commented that even uh, for the new H jet in Xbox, they're able to display the navigate navigraph uh, chart. So oh, okay. Looks so like there's a, an inter an interface available to make that happen. Yeah. So down the road. All right, let's jump in the 5:30 because this is the last one I'm trying to get updated here. And I love that you don't have to do the arrows anymore. <laughs> oh my god, so much better. So, post what you guys think we should do for the ready to start. How much fuel would you like to have in the plane and how many passengers and luggage? Like, um, Because I would like to make a shortcut so that you don't have to do this every time if you just want to do a ready to start which is kind of convenient okay I was thinking My is half fuel, no passengers. <laughs> I was thinking like two passengers in the back a cup and a couple pieces of luggage in the nose and that's it with with and the pilot and co-pilot okay and then uh, and and yeah, and fifty percent fuel. All right, you can see we have no passengers there. So this is the last LOD model that I'm exporting right now, and I think it's done. So I'm resyncing, <clears throat> and then we can just go ahead. Oh yeah. So by the way, so I talked to the paint company. We're gonna put the uh, original props back, and um, I also I don't like his the design that he came up with, which usually they don't do our modeling, but they did in this instance, and uh, I wasn't happy with it either. So we've decided to go back. So that won't be in today's update, but that's that's going to get returned uh, back to the stock one. But we are going to fix some of the problems that the old one had, and uh, I won't go into details on that right now. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. All right, there we go. So we're officially done. Now we have um Oh, wait. Yeah, let's uh let me open that back up. 
got one vote for ready to start with no loadout so far. With no what? No loadout. I guess no load. No, no passengers. Yeah, just fuel. No passengers, no luggage. You have a question. Can there be a pushback button on the ESV? A pushback? Is there... I even, You know what's funny is I've never used the pushback in this sim since I've owned it. It's funny. Um, I'm sure it's just like the old one, right? Where you could do straight back or you can press maybe like what? Shift P and then hit like one or two and then it will go back and then turn or something. Is that the... Uh, still got the old school setup? I assume. I yeah. Well, let's, let's see if somebody answers here. I like how they're looking out the windows. <laughs> okay, uh, so here we go. So you see they're going to disappear right here. So right now I'm only releasing the passengers to LOD2. Uh, well, it's actually 0 and 1, but it's basically two LODs, the interior and up to this distance. And then the door most likely would be closed, so you're not really going to see them. If we go to 3, well, if we go to 2, it would be... That's where it disappears. It would be right there. So, yeah, not much difference there either. <clears throat> okay, let's just quickly jump through and make sure that all the models have uh, all the passengers. So here is the PMS-50. Oh, so... What I wanted to do today was I want to add th um, double options for the PMS-50 where we're going to call for the liveries plus WT so that you can choose if you want the WT or not. And the reason why is, is we have found several bugs with it, in including one that is really annoying, actually. And we, it's, we did a bunch of testing this morning and have prove that it's not us <laughs> so you can just use the standard uh, autopilot logic and you won't have these problems um, but I do like the working title logic I just um, can't wait till they f fix a few more of the kinks and the G1000 uh, um, has one of the issues that, that I, I could talk about later but uh, the other one it doesn't have it's only the one that they custom made for PMS 50 so I reported it to PMS, PMS 50 this morning, so he can look at getting that fixed. Um, okay, so we got all our passengers. And we got our passengers. And let's go to the XI. Yeah, so when you turn the avionics on and off, you're going to notice a sound right away of the autopilot disconnecting. It's also the uh, sound for the um, the autopilot test, and then when it finishes the test, it'll play the sound again. So you're going to hear it twice uh, when you turn this on and off. So it'll be tone right there, and then it will tone right there. You have a question about the plane state. Is it working? Talk about saving the state of the plane. Yeah, and matter of fact, um, I, yeah, I will. And actually, I thought about something else today, too, that I want to make it. I was thinking, well, no, that would be dumb. That's right. Never mind. I take that back. We don't want to save the state of passengers in there because you're not going to leave passengers in a plane. <laughs> but, um, they got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll talk about this, the state of that here in one second. I just want to make sure. We got all of our passengers. All right. Oh yeah, so uh, textures for the engines are there, yep. That was another reported issue, but I don't think that was actually something that we released as a problem. More of a repaint, probably, package. 
the saving state. So the saving state saves um, several of the switches uh, positions. Some of them we don't include there because, like, if you're gonna part, if you're gonna load up at the ramp or you're gonna load up on the runway, then by default we already set those switches f for those. But maybe like odd stuff, um, you know, where you leave them, that they'll be there when you come back because it's not something that would be needed to be loaded in those situations. Um, but the most important one is the fuel. So I'll demonstrate the right. Question if you could also save the passengers. If I. Uh, so that if they like to fly with, you know, with a certain amount of fuel in the past, they don't have to reload the passengers. If I exit right now with the fuel off in, one, in any of the tanks or one of the tanks and then I reload, it's going to come back that way. Even if you were to load fuel in the uh, hangar's flight planner. So you do, you're wasting your time doing it there because the purpose is, is that you come back to the airport and you call a fuel truck and you order fuel and you do it from there. And then you deal with the fuel computer. The fuel computer has got nothing to do with the reading of the fuel tank so you have to give it its information so um, that's something that you would do uh, if you're going to just use the fuel that's already in there then you just leave it on gallon remaining or you go to fill up or you go to add gallons and add to what you currently had and, that, and then that'll be for the total of what you're going to have for the flight alright what was that question now? there's a request for what what was called a saved personal load state, meaning can you can you set a certain amount of fuel in passengers that you can load with one click, so you don't have to click the pa passengers every time. No, that's what we were just talking about. So um, we're asking people if we want, we could make it so that ready to start can have like a couple passengers in there already in a couple bags. But no, you basically have to come in here and you got to load all of the passengers yourself. They're not going to save because, again, we just talked about that. You're going to park right. the plane. What you leave is what you come back to. You're not leaving passengers in the plane. <laughs> it's realistic for the fuel to stay in the plane, but not the passengers is your point, right? Yeah. So we um, updated the prop sync. Um... Oh, yeah, I, uh, I killed one of the engines. We also disabled the primer, and we have to write our own if we want to return it because the default is, God, it's pretty dumb <laughs> logic. Um, so, so to start the plane, you don't have to use the primer. All right. So if the right engine, obviously, uh, there we go. If the right RPM is faster than the left, then it's going to spin to the right. And vice versa. If you turn on the prop sync and you're more than a hundred uh, RPM out, it's gonna flash. And I'll let you know right now that the built-in Sims prop sync is not on right now. So it, that's what it's warning you. Um, if you are within 50 to 100, it won't blink, but it's basically going to be dead. And uh, it's also not going to be on. The system is not working. So once you get a solid light, if you watch carefully, these needles, I'm not going to touch nothing. These needles are going to steady out because the, sims, the sim is actually doing what it's supposed to do. And it will sink the RPM. And then the phasing knob is something that is a step further, which is supposed to match the arc of one of the uh, propellers to the other engine's propeller. I mean, the other propeller. So um, that's not really simulated. <laughs> so I'll show you what I've done. Just to... What you that's... mean by that is when one engine has a blade vertical, for example, the other engine will have a blade vertical. Yeah. Blade you know what's right? interesting? Yeah. You know what's interesting is I'm gonna put this a little bit closer. It didn't seem to. Uh, I wonder if like even 50 is too far away for the default because I've never seen that fail before. So I'm just waiting for it to stop. I can go open up Simvars and take a look, but uh, I 
That's weird. It's supposed to completely stop. Pretty close. Well, I, I'm I'm just countering it right now. And then the idea of the phasing was is that you could put this at top dead center. And that was going to be like you're trying to even it out uh, one with the other. But you would have to put it back to top dead center. But this is something I want to go over with Joe anyways. And uh, he messaged me saying he's in California and he would talk to me at the end of this week. So it needs, needs a little bit more love. Um, Are failures something maybe out in the future at some point? But what I don't understand is why it failed. Uh, let me uh, let me open up my sim vars. So this is gonna be props. Connect. Okay. Yep. The prop sync uh, is one and two is active. One's at two o four nine. One's at two o five seven. Where is the value that I would see for the difference between them? Oh, I know where it would be. But you guys can't see this because I'm sharing just this the stream only. All right. Well, I'll take a look at that a little bit later today. Mark. Because it's not. It's like it's off by a little bit. Yep. Go ahead. I don't understand why. There was a comment. There was a comment about is it possible to model some failures in the future? Yeah. Well, uh, Joe. Joe's come up with. with yeah. Joe's come up with a list, and uh, we're not going to do anything like loss of performance because the sim really. Um, you'd have to like write a lot of C++ WASM and um, you have to really mess with things like fake the positions of the throttles and make it so that they're really here when you have them here to make it feel like it's lost power and stuff. So we've decided that it's not that hard to just do a failure like when the engine really fails and so Joe wants to do a few um, maintenance things to where at these amount of hours, you're supposed to do this, this, and this, and including uh, oil. And um, he knows how much oil is lost in how many hours. So you will be adding. F you can add oil appropriately when when it when it drops from checking it, or when you get to your maintenance, you'll be down to like nine quarts out of twelve. And the POH says you can go all the way down to eight quarts without a problem. So. Um, Yep, so then you can refill the oil, and uh, if you don't refill it, and you get below 8, we can basically uh, make the engine fail <laughs> and seize up. Um, so. For those who may not know, Joe is the actual owner of the real plane. He's an ATP pilot, flies uh, business jets for a living. But he owns this real plane. Alright, I see a problem. Our, we're missing our new texture there. Hmm. Let's, let's, uh, let me make a note. That's weird, because we just, I just got that, and, uh, how is that already missing? Just got the new texture for that. It's interesting. Here, let's give, uh, everybody a view of what the model looks like in 3DS Max. Do I have, uh, yeah, I guess I only have one of these open. Two seventeen. People on Discord can hear me. Is that right, Mark? Yeah. Both. Yes, sir. Oh yeah. Uh, I think everybody can. Yeah, and everybody on YouTube can hear everybody in here, as well. the hell is 3ds max right there okay so i think everybody should be should see 3ds max now except hmm that's weird uh obs doesn't want to detect it correct correctly what <coughs> interesting. 
Can you see the string, the the YouTube? Yeah, it went, it went, yeah. That's because it's not, it doesn't want to show 3DS Max, but I don't understand why. Um. OBS occasionally has issues with some software to show at least on window mode, unless OBS is running on admin mode. Unless it's running on what what mode? Admin. So it has been run as administrator. Oh, if I have to run it on admin. Okay. All right. Uh, so just, uh, I think display capture would work as a, like a workaround. Okay. Um, I almost forgot. Why was I coming into 3DS Max again? Let me go back to the sim to remind me. Oh, yeah. So that uh, miss, mix, uh, missing texture here. Let's see real quick. But there was another reason I was going to look at. To answer a question, there's not going to be a user defined save and load state. That was discussed above. Let's see. Says no 414 interior gauges. So why? If that's, I, I should be the updated version. I don't understand. What have I done wrong? Oh yeah, I know what I want to do. Do we see it here? Yes, I do. All right, so let's go ahead and update the sim real quick. Four one four gauges, gauges. Because that would be a bummer to release it like that. All right, here we go. Let's resync, and we should have a texture here. So this got replaced because it used to be two needles stacked on top of each other, and I found it from Joe that it was just an illusion, and it's actually just one needle. Um, that is, looks like two needles. <laughs> I'll show you. Oh no, it's not working. Let's see. Let's try jumping in the PMS 50 real quick and see if it's there. I don't see why it's not showing. to do some homework here real quick. Okay, so that's where the new texture is, right there. Let me go. the textures Mark question when you're ready I'm ready oh yeah can let me put custom, can there be custom end numbers is the question yeah that, that one's come up a few times I don't know the answer to that we don't really we have uh, textures done for it and the texture company takes care of that so how do you make tail numbers if there's no digital place to put them? Can you guys see the sim now in Discord? I Good. see the sim in Discord. In Discord? Okay. Oh, let's see. What am, am I, I in Discord? In no, Discord. I'm in YouTube. Yeah, though, YouTube is working, but Discord might not be. 
It's not. It's minimized on your end. Uh, well, oh, you know what? Hold on. Wait a minute. The stream is paused on Discord. Yeah, it's being dumb again. It does that. Let me let me stop it. Make sure this is up and running. All right. Well, here I'll just give I'll give you guys the uh, the straight. There's there's going to be no sound for right now. <clears throat> All right, well, I'm going to have to make a note because um, I think what has to happen is I have to rest I have to restart the sim to bring that to get that texture to work. So, I'll make a note to make sure it's fixed before I release it. So, let's see. Copilot. Air speed needle. Because I just physically replaced it again and uh, as you guys over here in discord can see it's right here all right well I want to demonstrate some stuff that we didn't demonstrate last time and uh, we're gonna what what uh, what version are we in right now? Yep, perfect. Okay. Okay, we have. Yeah, does anybody know the answer to where if your way uh if one engine's not running and the other one is, would the would the synchro phaser be moving at all until you even have two engines running? That's that's one of my questions. The difference would be greater than 100. That's for sure. <laughs> yep. All right. So another thing with this airplane is, is you do not use flaps to take off, according to Joe. Uh, if you maybe have, whoa. That was some bullshit there. Um, you get a call your oh shoot! <laughs> See, notice how I said shoot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so one thing to warn about, turn on the flight director first, and then the flight director will catch up to where we're at, and then when you turn the autopilot on, it's not just going to nose down. Ha! It tried a little bit, but you can also hit PTC, and it will even prevent that little bit of doing that, but it was better since we had turned that on first. Um, so, what did I want to demonstrate? Yeah, so I'm going to demonstrate, um, let's go a little bit faster here, get this back. Okay, yeah, so here's a perfect example. Um, this wouldn't happen to you guys. I'm going to have to restart the flight uh, for the PMS-50 because if you do a resync, I lose all um, ca uh, connections to the uh, logic. <clears throat> but this would not be normal because you guys wouldn't be using the uh, resync. So. So much appealing about this plane just occurred to me. That is one packed panel. Okay, so why did that just happen? Let's restart again.
I guess we'll start from cold and dark. I mean, I'm loading on the runway. I don't know why it would have done that. Yep, it's going to do it again. Nope, yep, it's going to do it again. So that's weird. Battery switches are on, everything. All right, I'm going to go back to the main menu. It's obviously... Uh, I want to check something here real quick. Make sure I had put this back on. Yeah, it's on. Okay. Fuel selectors. Anyways, uh, since okay, so there's a bug with the Sobo when you change use the um the the dev window to change planes. Um, it it messes with it will uh it will it'll basically say you have no fuel when you do. So that's <laughs> it's that's what it was. So we're just gonna do. <clears throat> Come from the hangar and everything will be fine. I I usually never use that and I just go back to the hangar each time. But I guess for doing the passengers test it was kind of quicker. <laughs> Every once in a while I'll use that. Okay. Oh, so the new um, control lock is no longer to to, re to return is no longer here. It is now between these four gauges here. So there's a little disclaimer for you, and the reason why is is because a Sobo still has a bug where if you click through a tablet, you can click buttons through the window. See that? And if I put all there's a you can you can you, they tell you to make these design uh, these wall blockers right and if I put a wall blocker behind here you can't press anything on here <laughs> it'll fix it but, but you'll have a broken tablet in answer to your question about starting up there's a comment that uh, fifty percent fuel and no passengers is realistic. Okay. Then that'll be easy. All right, so guess what? I had no fuel because of the bug, and then I left the sim, so when I came back, I had no fuel. So now I have to leave with fuel. I just put fuel in the tanks. I have to leave and now come back to have fuel. Or I could have just stayed and left, but the, it's just another example of the save state. What you walk away from is what you walk back to. So you can't overcome that once you're in the... No, no, no. I, I could have just added fuel right there, and then I would have been fine. Oh, okay, okay. I just, I would have had to restart the engines and all that, and the whole point is, is that we're trying to show that, yeah, I'm loading up on the runway, and everything is nice and healthy. That's all. It's just that I have not actually shown that yet. <laughs> so... That's weird. What the hell? Okay. Let's just hit active pause real quick. I want to open up the tablet. So this is what I was talking about when I brought all the code over here. i got to be careful today. I haven't seen this mistake yet. And yeah, it's just stuck on. So that's really unusual. So I know what it is, and I'm going to make a note. So... Not only did we change the position of this, and we reversed it because now we have two entries here. Um, there's logic so that when the aircraft is rolling, it disables all the equipment. 
and it's also supposed to disable these. And what I ha and since I had reversed this, it's doing the opposite now. It's basically, it's um, it's doing its job, but it's doing it backwards. But it's still going to allow me to have uh, no locks on right now. It's just going to show it visible. So let me make a note. Um, I guess parked mode. for um, control lock um, is uh, reversed. Okay, so we'll just have to ignore that right now. So, that's interesting. Oh, I must have uh, slipped and hit altitude. Okay, so what was the limitation I was going to mention was first one is the IAS so the al alerter is below us and uh, oh yeah so one of the things I fixed this morning is the um, vertical speed was um, purposing and that's been fixed now so it'll be very stable um, does it mean it it, it won't move a little bit in the wind, but it will not sit there and uh, go more than 50 uh, if, if if it is windy. It was shooting up about like plus and minus 300. All right, so if I hit IAS, that's 158. You notice how that just came down right there? That's because it's only IAS is only going to work from zero and negative because of the alerter position here. So let's go ahead and put that back to 800. Now the other downside is, and this is the default autopilot, that's why I, I would prefer having the working title logic on everything, but uh, I can't wait for it to become the standard. Uh, as you bring this past 2,400 feet, well, that's 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 a good trick though. If you do it fast enough, it oh no no it actually grabbed it. Never mind. I take it back. It's gonna it's gonna grab the altitude and lock you in there. Now that we have it higher than us, now if we go to VS in 800 feet a minute, it'll work as it should. So there's 167, and we're about 400 feet a minute, so I'm going to reduce the speed to about 160, and it should climb to reduce that speed. And now we're doing 160. Let's go. Let's go to 150. And it's going to capture 4,000 feet. So let's bring this up higher. Don't want capture. So we have a bunch of ESP um, <coughs> warnings that can happen. Um, one is um, stalling the aircraft. So let's go into VS, go 2,000 feet a minute. Bring back the manifolds. And you basically are going to get a tone and a flash and you're going to get kicked into IAS and even if you're in heading it'll kick you into roll in IAS 
as soon as you're five knots above stall. And then it's going to push the nose down. But here's a problem, Al. Another problem with this damn IAS thing. I have this now above us. See this? So I, I, I'm curious what it's going to do now because we're below that altitude. So I think what it's going to do, which is still, it still works. It just brings it down to zero instead of going a little bit more negative. And then uh, once you're above 90 knots, then it kicks you back into um, uh, roll and pitch. So, but, <clears throat> okay. Well, I guess we need to stall a little bit more here. Let's go. Why are we not? I wonder if we should lower that 90 by five. There we go. So I'm getting a tone right now. But it's not doing a very good job at n lowering the nose because most likely of this so it's it's another limitation that uh, is annoying with the IAS where we had this stuff all worked out with our other autopilot but unfortunately then you can uh, then you have to you can only use your mouse so <laughs> you never win in this in this situation making these airplanes it's just you just cannot get everything you want that's the problem no. and Sounds like life. Yep. Half the people want this, the other people want this, and you can't give them both what they want. <laughs> so what's the logic that when 90 becomes an end speed, is that you're airborne with the gear up and, and autopilot's on, and that just becomes an end speed, or is that something that gets calculated? Could it be different speeds? So it's five knots above stall, and you have the autopilot on, and you're in a VS or you are in IAS or PIT, uh, it will prevent you from stalling or warn you. And then at any time, you can hit the autopilot disconnects is what you should do and, and then correct for it. Um, but it will not work uh, below 200 feet. So you have to be 200 feet above the ground. But it's not working right now. And that's because, I'll give you a better example, is because this should have been this little limitation which we're asking a Sobo to fix this anyways we want to have a built-in arming mode um, okay so let's give this a try again now And another problem I'm having right now is, is usually I don't have, there it goes. Okay, let's just watch it do its deal. So it'll have no problem getting down in the, neg in the uh, minus value here now for IS. And then as soon as it got past 90, it kicked off. Um, that should have gone back to pit, so that was weird. Okay, let's try this one more try. I'm not going to go as steep now. One of the problems here is I'm already... Let me... Let me um, <clears throat> I don't know why, but the PID seems a lot weaker today. It's not holding where it should be. Okay, there's 1400. Let's do this. What? Hey, come Wendy's, yeah. Regular thing. Hello, hello. Hello. 
It's weird. It's supposed to kick. It's supposed to kick us back into uh, roll and pitch. So I'm gonna have to look into that. Uh, every, every time I tested this, it was fine before until I ended up having to uh, fix this other bug today, working with the PID. Um, it's not holding VS as well. And then um, we um, I, two days ago, I found that uh, if I was in heading or I was in nav or I was in one of these other laterals, um, it wouldn't go into roll, so I had to fix it, which I did. But now it seems like something got messed up here. So you fix one thing, you break another. So I'm going to have to look into that. But let's go into the other uh, ESP mode. So um, if the autopilot's off and you overbank the aircraft more than 45 degrees, you're going to get max bank. The autopilot's going to kick on. It's going to roll you back to 35, and then it's going to kick the autopilot back off, So as you can see there. So it's almost impossible, if, as long as the flight director's on, to overbank the aircraft. It's gonna, now it's going to come back. There you go. And that is the real thing that the GFC 600 does. The other one would be if you max pitch. It's going to do the same thing, and then it's going to pitch up same with going up um, and then there's one more that a lot of people are going to get confused on which is above 160 knots let's get going here let me hit on level level um, If you try to command, like, let's say 2,000 feet a minute and you're going over 160 knots, the autopilot is not going to be able to um, to hold that 2,000. So it's going to give you another audio saying max speed. But that speed is not because you're going over the max speed of the aircraft. You are going too fast for the servo to command the amount of vertical speed that you're asking it to do. So that's the reason for the max speed so anyways <clears throat> so it looks like for the uh, stall speed one I need I need to um, I have a couple tweaks I gotta do on that today Make a note. yeah I am So what's another little fun feature? So let's go um, let's go load up at uh, San Francisco. We're gonna do an approach with the working title. And I'm gonna demonstrate something that we asked working title to fix and PMS 50 uh, agrees with me and he's on board and they said that they're gonna look into and fix it. So I'm looking forward to this. And I'm going to demonstrate what it is. And it doesn't mean that it prevents you from doing what you're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. but it's just kind of like I just have to show you, and then there's a there's a way to not have to. Damn it! I forgot to load up and say that. Okay, yes, uh, oh. All right. So first of all, let's make I, sure. I, yeah. I can, the answer to the customize your own end number. We answered that above. The answer is no. Right. Like you mean actually showing up on our. Pl you know. You can. You can do it. Yeah. You can make a digital placard that goes on the uh, paint kit and on that. And I mean the structure with this aircraft, the way the tail number is on the tail in real life very difficult to get a digital <laughs> tail number on there but there is maybe an upgrade there is something that we can do to make it to where the customers can still add their own tail number for ATC and that may be what the question is I'm not sure and not um, sure I haven't quite got the answer on how to do that yet but I think in the aircraft config um, there's something that we can do in there 
that allows the customer to to input a tail number for uh, so they can use a custom number even though it will be displaying wrong on their airplane but yeah so there's also the placard right here yeah but it won't show up on the tail no and it would look it would look like crap if we did because of the way it it, it literally because of the three-dimensional tail that we have a very realistic tail um, why did I go that high? Okay, I want to go right here. And Okay, so this is the PMS-50 working title logic. Um, we're going to put it in heading mode. We have 11170, runway 28 right, arms. And um, the way the working title works is is that it won't just, the, the default autopilot will just capture as soon as it sees the signal. And it will like it won't even do a 45 to, to intercept it'll it'll uh, it's it's not that great <laughs> the working title is a lot better and they'll wait for the CDI to swing in so we'll go ahead and arm it here um, which it says localizer but here's where the downside is if I were to hit the approach right now and add the glide slope before the CDI swings then when it does swing in it locks the approach, kicks you back into nav, and this stays armed, but you no longer can use it. You can't turn it on, you can't turn it off, and you can only get out of approach if you were to swap the frequency. It is stuck there until you completely get out of nav or uh, and, and land the plane. <laughs> um, that mode will just stay stuck on. If you leave it off for right now and just do the nav, and then the CDI swings, and then you intercept, then you could use the approach all day long. You can turn it on, you can turn it off, and arm it, because that's the way that Working Title saw it working, was that you would use it afterwards, and, and it works great. But they should also make it so it does that before, <laughs> because you could get clearance to land before you even intercept. So let's do it the regular way first and demonstrate that okay I'm just kinda get a little bit more 45 degree angle there alright that needle should be swinging any second here there it goes. All right, so it's captured. And now that it's captured, I basically can arm approach and you get glide slope. I can turn glide slope off and turn localizer back on. And I have the freedom to now turn it go back and forth between these. Um We've also reported to the work uh, to PMS 50 today that there's porpoising going on when you are uh, flying a VOR. Now I don't know what's going to happen on a approach, so let's see what happens now because it may do it on this too as well. And so as, it, as soon as it tries to get, uh, let's see, let's turn that back on. As soon as it tries to get going straight, let me uh, let me change this to overcast. It's so much easier for me to see. Um, 
yeah watch so watch this so it's gonna lean a little to the left there now it's gonna lean to the right and then this thing usually jumps the uh, flight director will jump a bunch here it goes through here watch this there it goes see it move and now it's going to go the other way and so it basically it, it cannot stay centered and no matter what PID setting we do but if we use the regular Sobo's logic uh, autopilot this has no issues at all so we reported that and also this doesn't have an issue with the G1000 that the working title guys wrote so it's only the PMS50 that's doing it so that is another disclaimer and that's why I'm probably going to release this today with uh, two options for the PMS 50 so you're not forced to use that not forced to use what? Working the working title right. logic that comes with the PMS 50 right it'd be up to you which one you want to use um, it's still usable I'm not and like I said you know like don't use the approach until you intercept um, <laughs> for it heading to the airport it's gonna kind of like do this <laughs> So you're gonna you're gonna be like a snake going to the class. Okay. There must be a delay in the system. Let me just answer again. Uh, on the end number, the answer is no. On the exterior, you can't change the exterior end number. Mark explained why. Yeah. Above, but Which means yeah. we're not gonna do this one either. The interior one here. All right, so let's see here. So let's go 11.70. Uh, we're arming, and then we're also arming the glide slope. Put altitude on. Here we go. And uh, let's not, let's go a little bit better of an angle to capture too. There we go. Okay, so this is where working title is trying to fix this if we arm the we're in approach mode right now basically that's why the glide slope's there it'll still look like we're in the approach mode when it captures but basically it really puts us back in the nav mode because uh, behind the behind the curtain uh, I, when I watch simvars I know what it's doing and this button will do nothing it'll be completely stuck and that it'll be you know you're gonna get your glide slope but you don't have the choice to enable or disable it so it's not like it's you know prevents you from viewing your approach now it just it's just dumb it just it needs to be smarter than that if they can if they can allow you to do it afterwards then they can allow you to do it before so it should be an easy fix for them and that actually happens with their G1000 XI as well I've already tested that and reported it um, all right so yeah so if I were to press this now like we did before when I demonstrated you could see I was able to turn it off and go back to nav and I can't now I could probably turn off this but you still can't turn this off so even though I turn this off you have glide slope by itself no that doesn't make any sense <laughs> so yeah it's it's stuck for the rest of the flight until I change the frequency and then I can get out of it and now we're back to normal to where I can put localizer on and I have the freedom to use glide slope and not so I had to I had to swap the frequency real quick to fix it what if you're doing a GPS approach mark is there any kind of a similar problem? I I really just haven't gone that deep into it because I mean all we all we really do is we just design the autopilot with the buttons for the users to use and now we're going to give them the double option and um, we'll let all these other people figure out these other issues too I you know I, I found my Kirks and I'm not, I'm not gonna look for them all <laughs> I'm, too, I'm trying to get out of beta here and uh, I just don't have the hours to do it so a yeah. lot of a lot of complaints uh, you know and uh, since we had released this thing and um, we kept reminding people that some people may don't understand how there's different logic going on and uh, the TDS can't even use the working title logic because 
uh, as soon as you block the K events, the TDS won't work at all. So they ne they'll never be able to use the working title logic. So that's another limitation that kind of sucks because we want to see the working title uh, logic working great because it's so much more realistic. Um, so what else was something else we I wanted to demonstrate with the autopilot? Yeah, so, uh, oh, by the way, uh, Al, you know in the 530 how I said we could use the, uh, you can turn on the altitude and um, without having to do the little trickery I do to store the current value here? Yeah. Yep. You, I, I, couldn't re, I couldn't remove that in this autopilot because this one, since we are actually using the alerter the whole time uh, because of VS, we're, we're forced to do that. And the 530 doesn't have a VS. It only has pitch and um, and basically altitude hold. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, anyways. But the one thing is, is no, everybody will be reliable on... Uh, using these autopilots you should not ever have a problem okay let's let's do a capture here so let's go 2000 Okay, let's make that 3,000. So, Al, I don't think we're supposed to have this value here with the ALTS. You're supposed to read the value here. You're just supposed to have an ALTS down here. That's why there's no room between here and here. And I keep looking at some of the the, the real uh, images. It just has ALTS down here by itself. So I think we should get rid that's of this. Because, no, yeah? Yeah? No, that's because on the Garmin was made to work with a glass display with a PDF. And the PDF shows the altitude, so they don't sh have to show it. Right, but we computer. have it here. We, we have it here. So what I was thinking was, same thing. You just look here. You, you look here to see what it's set for, but it'll still tell you that ALTS is armed. So I don't I don't think we really need to see the value, to be honest. See the value where? Here, in the, in the, in the GF600. It's... You don't have to see it where on the alert or Hey, so something's broken. Oh wait, now it just popped up. Did you see that? Ah, I know what's wrong. Let me make a note. So you know how we updated the the stages, right? So we wouldn't accidentally um, uh, flash um, when we would just use altitude and it was really windy. We would uh, get the ALT. So we must have. Uh, we need to make another rule for the three thousand to show up because it's uh, it's not showing up until it gets into the into the uh, phase zero. So... Make a note. Yeah, I know, I'm making a note. I... You... Man, if these guys only knew how many notes I have made in the last six... two months. <laughs> I've gone through three packets of uh, stickies. <laughs> the yellow, yellow stickies. <laughs> the post little... Post-its, yeah, post-its. <laughs> <coughs> All right. <laughs> I tell you what, I love the post-its because uh, if you tried to just put this on paper and stuff and then cross it out and ha it just it would make a mess. And the post-its is great. You could just stick them in different areas and keep them in groups and stuff. Oh, it's great. I love it. It is excellent. It is the secret for developing aircraft. Let me tell you. <laughs> Ugh. All right, so um, alt okay, so altitude capture uh, value uh, not showing. Uh, early enough. Basically, it needs to be showing also in stage three and zero, <clears throat> which I could go do in two seconds, but I'm not going to do it right now since. Uh, 
We're just basically demonstrating. But I'll tell you what, I love some of the new features here. So we have, uh, obviously we know this is backwards right now. Um, there's our co-pilot. Yeah, so we got our weather. I love the little logo for this one right here. You can see the guy actually stepping up in the little step with his luggage. <laughs> Fuel and uh, checklist. So I guess I found out that these two were the same. It's This is Rick and Rick. One of them is just looking back. He also has different clothing on. Cindy and Cindy's the same with a bottle or a tablet. And then there's a third guy, uh, Will, as well. Oh, I'm getting a uh, middle marker. Okay, I, thought, I was wondering what that was. Let's take a look at Here we go. So there should be control lock right there. So we're going to make that a zero and now it's going to be official. We're going to hit resync. And one of our problems is going to go away right now. Copilot parked mode for the control lock. This one right here. This should be fixed now. Yep, there's our control lock. It's gone. Oh! Resync has got a huge delay. Yep, now they're both completely off. It's it's trying to come back on, but it can't because of the <coughs> it's the override for once once the aircraft is moving. Any more uh questions on YouTube? No. The last the last thing I saw was by changing the external end number and because of the uh, paint co how the paint company is doing that. What's the, what's that this about bots spamming inappropriate usernames? Like what inappropriate usernames? There's uh there's uh pornography like stuff getting posted in the in the question area. And how do they do that? Like uh oh like try us 18 plus Tinder. Yeah, it's spam. So um, I don't know what to do. Right, but you could just report it, right? And then the then they'll eventually get uh, something will happen. See, here we go. Report. Um, there. I don't know how they're going to be able to keep their channels if they're always getting these reports. How did they even get a chance? <laughs> you know, that's a nice looking plane from the outside. Oh yeah, not the inside. No, I'm. J I mean, the <laughs> Cessna's design of the plane. Cessna's design of the plane is just just a nice looking plane. All right, control locks are working good. <laughs> Excellent. So, cold and dark still works. I still have not coded these two. Um, it should take me one afternoon. I, I was saving it for the end, but. Obviously, we're not at the end yet, so I'm still saving it. <laughs> um, so those are getting done later. So Yeah, see, that's why I didn't want to rush into releasing this today, because bringing over the passengers was... 
a lot of weird, strange uh, areas to update throughout, like a lot. And so I wanted to make sure that it really everything is working well and uh, the control locks too is was part of it. And so I think we should, I should jump in the other two planes real quick. <clears throat> and I'm gonna double check the control locks. Al, you got the con for a second. I'll be back in one sec. Okay. All right, have a good trip. Yep. So how long have we been streaming? YouTube says 86 minutes ago when the stream started. Uh, 86 minutes? Yeah. All right, so like an hour and 20? Uh, All right. I just want to make sure that I'm going to cap it at two hours. That's how long the last one was. But uh, so we got we got time. So all right. So that that parked mode is now fixed. And if I'm going to get this out to you guys today, we need to start fixing some stuff. So let's look into fixing something else. Let me. Um, Don't want to do that one because I have to restart the sim to, to confirm that one. And I should just do a, a complete rebuild of the textures. So I'm going to skip that one. But, oh, I do want to mention something. So another update that I'm going to be doing, be, it won't be out today, but turning on the door light switch will also turn on this to, to max. Okay. Or turning on this switch which is the same as the door light switch so either the door or this one turns on this light and it makes perfect sense because Joe says yeah how the hell are you going to see how to get up to the cockpit if you don't have a light switch at the door entrance just like you have in the house and I'm like oh okay that makes sense so um, yep and then it lets you know that it's on right here so I wasn't aware of that. So I have got that written down. I need to add that. Ready to start and the cabin light. Yep. Uh, oh, engine cooling sound is back. Uh, we could not fix. We have no way to know how to fix it following the camera. So that's probably if it does it in the DA62, it probably does it with, you know, it's going to do it with us as well. It's not something that we set up wrong or something um, but the uh, the sounds are back for the uh, exhaust cooling let's see cow flap lever needs tubing yeah so I also need to model down here um, I don't think anybody really notices because they're really not gonna notice I don't I mean it doesn't have to be done but technically there's a cable that goes along here for this see that <laughs> so uh, let's see what else do I have written down <sighs> pulling the controls back is supposed to release the uh, rudder lock so I'm, gonna, I'm probably gonna do that one as well so we'll just make it so once you go
So why is my yoke not moving right now? Oh, you know what? Okay, so see, this would have been a bad release too. I just noticed something. Is it this one that's preventing it from doing that? No. It's backwards then. Yep, it's backwards. Okay. We've got more to fix. <clears throat> I knew it was going to be challenging getting the passengers over to the main product pro uh, project because... There's so many little tiny little changes here and there. So... <laughs> uh, that, yeah, I didn't make any post-its on how to bring it over. I just, I have it developed in another project, and that project is just... No, I'm just thinking oh. backwards, I think. Yeah. All right, so let me think here for a second. So we need to go... No, not there. We need to go to the yoke, find, yoke, down to the visibility section, well it wouldn't be hide yoke, we're actually, it's, it's uh, preventing it from actually animating, oh yeah, hold on. I know what needs to be updated. Hmm. Okay, lever stick left right, um, control lock one, booyah, there we go, zero, zero. Okay, what model are we in right now? Um, okay, so let's op update another one. Let's go to the PMS 50, make that a zero. Zero and see it's paying off, taking my time here because <clears throat> I could I could just send this to the to the small beta group and have them test it for a couple of days, but I know people really want this thing, so <clears throat> I just thought I'd get it done thoroughly today and uh, test it live and then We'll be good to go. No, no mistakes gonna hurt anybody. We're still in beta, anyways. All right, so the yoke doesn't move now, and now it does. There we go. Perfect. Fellow posted, you can block it. You can block this inappropriate comment from this particular user. Okay, I gotta check one more thing. See how the aileron's moving? It's also gotta be fixed and be reversed. <clears throat> um, which user? Oh, this particular one. Got it. Um. So now what we have to do is we got to go through the exterior and we need to look for the aileron. Control lock goes to zero so we could just search for a control lock and then... So that, this one is for the... yep. Okay, 
one to go. Oh, we already did that one, didn't we? Yep, that's the last one. Okay, let's resync the aircraft and uh, <clears throat> now the control locks for the ailerons and elevator should be correct. Okay, so let's look out the window. No movement. Uh, elevator, no movement. Rudder has got movement. Elevator, aileron. All right. Co-pilot airspeed needle. Yep, those three I really can't work on. I can work on the uh, altitude capture. Oh, you were, you were going to show how... No, I was going to write a code to do that. Oh, okay. We can do that right now. The guys um, on YouTube won't be able to watch. They'll get to see the result, but they can kind of listen in right now. Um, so we can... You're going to do what? Let me write that in the uh, overall logic, so we only have to put it in one place. We're going to write a code that... Um, if we move the yoke beyond a certain position, it will uh, release the rudder lock. But but actually, I just thought about something. We may want to... Actually, you know what? I, I think I changed my mind. Let's put that... Instead of um, using memory for it, we're only gonna. It's only going to basically uh, happen when you actually are moving the animation for the yoke. So let's see here. So right here. So basically, So the we'll come over to sim bars and we're gonna add uh, yoke x position or is it gonna be y position? That's a good question. I'm gonna find out in a second. Percent. switch so uh, Y is the uh, pulling back so let's say more than 50% on the Y so that's gonna be this one This is for what? And, and the real plane has this ability to, I mean, not to. Really yes, yeah. So moving the controls frees the rudder lock. Yep. Pulling the rudder. Yep. Um, so. The rudder lock? I forgot. Um, there's a there's a lever. Uh, there's a um, handle back here. Right here. See it? So it just keeps it from moving around too much if you're parked in it. Yep. Okay, so. 
I was watching YouTube. Does that uh, attack you in the back of the plane itself? Yeah, yes. Okay, so here's the rudder lock handle. And which one's the animation? Which one's the actual event? So there's two of them here. We have a rudder lock and a rudder lock handle. So we have to set both of them. Actually, yeah, and since, yep, we're going to have to set both. So let me. So essentially, if you would pull the yoke back enough to rotate, it ought to release. That would be the safety. Uh, what I want to do is I'm going to ask if the handle, well, we won't even ask the handle. We just want the mode because we're going to be looking at the tablet anyways. Either one will work, but we'll say if the lock rudder, uh, lock rudder um, is equal to 1 and the Y position, that way it can't flood, then we will set this to 0. Okay, so this is the XI. So again, I have to update another one because that's not the plane we're in. Let me come over here. And we will test it. In the PMS 50. Okay, rudder locks on. Nothing happened. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Let's take a look at uh, local var. Did you resync? Yeah, it just resynced. Oh, okay. okay. I th um, yeah, positive I did. Um, I'm watching. I'm watching YouTube, so there's a delay. <laughs> I was going to say I don't know why you wait. I mean, it's good to check the the. <laughs> the chat there, but you you could just watch it live here. Um, all right, so the rudder lock handle is a one, and the rudder lock is a zero. They're both zero. So rudder lock's not even turning on. Why is it not being used anymore? Okay, I'm gonna have to uh, do some investigating here. Hold on. So the lock is on with one there. That's the handle, and the rudder is locked. It's a zero there. And it's free. I would assume that we had the second variable because we were sending it to one of the gauges, like the HTML, and there was this one here for this light. Oh, so this actually, may, well, no, that still would be an Elvar right now. Let me, uh, hmm, let me put a. Uh, Add a boolean to that. Let me do a search too. be used for systems okay there's both of them there as well and it does ha actually have a bullion there interesting so let's go back put a space there put a space there I can't remember why I have two variables there. One would be for the logic and one's for the animation. I almost think that it's not needed anymore. The second one, I'm going to have to... 
dig around before I can I can remove that. But it, sec technically, we, I don't think we need it. Wow. Hmm. All right. In the real plane, is there a, is there a warning the locks on? Um. No, that's why it frees up when you move the controls. Okay, so we have to ask if this one is on, not that one, because <laughs> this one doesn't even... Well, that's kind of dumb, because technically, this one is supposed to turn on. I don't get it. I guess because this is missing the bull here, it may be messing up, so let me add that there as well. I'm going to have to do my math later and figure out. Okay, let's resync. So at one point we had it to where you could actually click the handle outside with the camera because we used to have it to where you could you could literally click it with your hand and that's what the other variable was for I remember now but we can't do that now because of some limitations so we ended up removing that and so this is the only place you can turn on is right here so it's using this one straight up to the default this would have also been able to get turned on and I think this one is what got used to get sent over here so alright so let's just this so now the question is why is it failing go back to my code I just wrote so the question is All right, we no longer need this. So yoke y position greater than 50. Yoke Y position percent. Yep, it's definitely greater than fifty. Hmm. Let me try putting this. Command first here. really weird okay then we're gonna do another try we're gonna do a test here with a update section and this will this will show that the code is working it just It's not going to work where I wrote it because the lever stick for aft is just animation only. There's no, oh right, there's no, yep, that's why. Yeah, it's just, it can't read the logic. Well, actually, 
No, it can't read the logic. It can only read the logic for animating the yoke. It can't talk to it, so... Hey, what? No way. Come on. This this is the X Oh yeah, this is the PMS fifty. And I am in the PMS fifty, yes. It doesn't look like I'm in the PMS fifty. No, I'm not in the PMS fifty. Well that's the problem. <laughs> why <laughs> why does this say I'm in the PMS fifty when I go here like that? Oh, it's the yellow one. Okay. Tell me me. I mean, the quick way to tell is by turning on turning on the seven fifty the way it initializes. Well, I just look at the, the, the bezel. The shape of the bezel gives it tells you. Um Alright, here we go. It's gonna work now. Now the question is, do I need the update section? Because the uh, the update would just be a little bit less memory if we can put it in the animation of this. Um, but the problem is, is that it's only an animation. There's no hand control on there. We're not using a hand. We're just using animation. So I think we need an update section. So, all right, here we go. Yep, there it goes. It's off. So let's go back here. You can see the handle is up. Rudder pedals are not moving. I mean, I'm removing my rudder pedals. The rudder's not moving. And it's moving. Okay. Now, just one quick test. I'm pretty sure there's no way you can read this logic here because... This is an animation code. This is not. Yeah, it's, it's just a waste of time. All right, so we're gonna have to use an update to go with that, and we'll just put that on a frequency of two, which is very low. Um, it's not like you have to have it working immediately. It'll be a slight little delay to it, but it'll also um, draw less memory. Okay, we're officially done. We now have rudder uh, auto or uh, uh, auto rudder disable, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> mechanism has been added to all three models. So we need to do a quick update to the uh, beta change logs because if you don't do it now you will no you'll forget so let's write um, uh, moving moving the yoke back now disables the rudder lock okay um new feature uh new prop synchronization system number two um new uh new 3d passengers will appear in cabin um, new uh, pages 
added to, to the tablet with um, new payload. New 3D passenger models that will appear in cabin. Um, I'll just make this number three. New uh, <clears throat> new pages ad added to uh, new pages add added to the tablet with new payload and fuel system. Tablet also has new decals for changing pages. Uh, uh, makes it faster. For navigating. So let's fix that uh, capture issue. So we're going to go. We might as well show these guys in Discord our. Uh, Beautiful Excel sh logic sheet that we made for the new GF600, and here it is. So, can I show this on uh, YouTube? Probably not. So we want to look at the string right here, which is the value for the armed vertical altitude altitude. Um, no, I take that back. That's, no, that actually might be right. That is the one. And that is mode three. And it requires active vertical mode between three and five and current phase one. And the problem is, or not equal to one. Oh, interesting. Well, if that's true, then it should have worked. So let's go confirm that right now because that doesn't make any sense. So let's go right here to Okay, so autopilot altitude lock var right here. Um, and, oh. Reconnection successful. Oh, we lost connection there for a second. Okay. Um, current phase. So I want to bookmark that. We're going to. All that extra memory being used. 
So we'll enable them all right now, and then we'll take a look at uh, this Elvar here. Well, before you send it to the, the, you know, the version that goes up to the marketplace and to your store, then you can. Oh, it's it, yeah. It, it doesn't matter if it gets left on, but it's yeah. It's the whole purpose of having HTML gauges is that you're <laughs> eliminating all those Elvars from being read throughout the whole sim. Um, okay, uh, why am I not getting a value right now? Uh, I, I got to think about this for a second. Oh, because I didn't resync. Okay. So we will see what phases are on right now. So that's weird because we're saying, hmm. Let me go back down to the current phases. So where's the phase section here? Where's the actual phase section? Update armed vertical mode. Come on, where's the face? Wait, what? Where the hell's my function for face? No, no. Should be. Oh, here it is, right here. Um. It's altitude phase memory. Wait a minute, what? Here it is, selected altitude phase. Zero. And we're telling it not to include anything but one, right? So it should include two and zero, or zero, which would be correct. So, okay, let's just go do the test again, because I don't understand why it fails. <laughs> Till I see it again. Okay, so we have a thousand feet a minute. We've got uh, two thousand feet a minute, as that's the ALTS, and then uh, that'll stop blinking. ALT is going to come up, and we should get a altitude with it immediately. So we are in phase one right now. See, this is why beta takes so long, <laughs> just to fix one little thing. It can take a little bit of time. Um, all right, so we should be going into, yep, there we go. Okay, so we're in phase two right now. So this is what I'm talking about. We're not getting a value for phase two. Now I know what it is. We're displaying the value, so it's doing its job here. We're fine there, but it's not giving me a value, and I know. I think I know what it is, so let me see here. But that's armed. Oh, okay. No, we want active. 
Alright, I was looking at the wrong place. Let's go back to the chart. I don't want the armed one. I want active. There should be a string for active... Uh, But these are all armed down here. I'm confused. There should be another... We know that ALT is right. Here. ALTS current phase flash active vertical mode. That should be within fifty feet, right? Yeah. But what I'm looking for is we only have the string down here for altitude, altitude, uh, but it says armed vertical. But it's really not armed, it's actually pit, you know, actually, this is, this weird. We should have never, um, we did we actually just named these armed down here, these three here. It's interesting, because technically it wouldn't be armed, but it, that is the right one, it's this string. All right. Let me think here logically for a second. It doesn't have a value of the current. Let me see my simvars real quick. I've got to load another simvars. Okay. So. Altitude lock var is 2,000, but the altitude that we share in that window, Al, is our captured altitude uh, when we're within... Oh, right. So we really don't have a value till we're within 50, because I don't think we have a value to share yet, right? Is that what you, That's exactly what you're kind of stating, which I see the problem now. Let me see here. Let me look at the code again. Where the hell's my string? Right here. Autopilot altitude lock bar. Autopilot altitude lock bar. 2,000. No, it already has the value. 2,000 feet, yeah. So it should be displaying. If we're in active mode 3 to 6 and current and uh, current phase is not equal to 1, which current phase That's is awesome. not. Yep, and um, active vertical mode is two. Ah, there's the problem. All right, I found it. So coming back to our Excel, we were going between three and six. So we look at active vertical modes here, and three to six is VS, IAS, go around and pit. But we did not include uh, two, ALTS and altitude. Um, so we're trying to exclude level. We would not want it in level. And um, and glide path. So, yeah, I think that's the fix right there. We just got to change that to a... Oops, wait a minute. Is it this one? Um, yep, it's this one. It's a two. Okay, let's resync and we'll do it again. We've been playing uh, musical chairs a few times with some of these modes, so that range just was out that was outdated now. Can you imagine doing all this if we had to restart the sim every time you make a change? <laughs> I'd it go get a different career. Impossible. I would it get would a be impossible. I'll just go work at 7-Eleven. <laughs> it's already bad enough. Well, the quick re the, the quick load is... OK. 
Okay. Um, am I in an active pause? Yes, I'm in active pause. Okay. So, 1,500 feet. We're climbing to 2,000. Or, actually, 2,000. Yeah, see, now we're in active vertical mode, too. So, that one's going to work. And the one that... Uh, Um, where's our, where's our mode? What am I looking for? Mode, uh... Um... Phase. Oh yeah, the word phase. Right here. We're in two. Oh, we're not getting anything. Failed. Wait a minute. So we're in phase two. And we're in active lateral mode one. Wait a minute, one. Wait a minute. What do we? Let me go back to the chart. Active vertical mode zero. Why would we be in zero? So none of them are true. What the hell? Why would active lateral mode go to zero? There's no such thing. Well, actually. That means every single one of these is not true, Al. <laughs> that can't be right. Two went away. That's that's a problem. Hold on a second. Active vertical mode. Active vertical mode two. Oh no, we're in two. Okay. So, oh yeah, well we're showing the 2000 now. Let me lower down a little bit again. Um, we still had a zero there. But, okay, wait a minute, hold on. Yeah, let me see if I can, um, do I have to redo the whole experiment again? Let's see. Uh, let's just do the quick one right here. Okay. All right, I'm going to pay attention here this time. So, active vertical mode is in two. ALTS 2000. It's because I swear I thought that I thought it changed to a zero for a second. Yeah, I think it. I think or I was just looking at the wrong line. Because right now we're in we're in phase one and we're about to go to phase two. Um, and the whole point is we're saying just don't show it as long as we're not in phase one. Like don't show it right now, which is what we want. Uh, actually, we'd still want it to show it right now, so that's kind of weird too. All right, so we're still in two phase. Where the hell's phase? Is in two right now. Now it's in zero. Okay, I gotta watch phase again. And then I'll figure is, out what's... Is it flashing? Are we getting to 2,000 when it gets less than 10 feet? We had the t 10 to... Uh, 10 wait, wait, one second. Hold on, I just want to see what we're doing here. Okay, current phase one. But that's 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 the opposite, because we're showing the 2,000. should show the 2,000. Why are we saying that we don't want to show armed vertical altitude I think this is the wrong one now I keep thinking this is the one that shows the the out this shows when it's ALTS at the bottom this is the wrong one where, where is the other string that's what I cannot find um, there should be two there's got to be two strings you can't we, we have one for the armed right in the bottom left but it does say altitude altitude so pit 
Yeah, that's actually the right one. No, this is the right one. Two to six and not in current phase one. All right, let's... Uh, I'm going to disable this for a second, okay? So we're going to go... That's armed, it's saying. Armed vertical. Yeah, I know, but ignore it. We should... We just... It was a, na it was a bad naming um, mode. Unless that really is the armed one. That's why I'm disabling it. We're going to find out right now. Um, So ALTS is missing the number down there. That's what I want to get rid of. See that? How it was gone? That's the one I want to permanently disable. So actually, that was actually easier than I why? thought. All we have to do is remove it. So that's still there. Why, so, do you, why, why, why do you want to get rid of the uh, number? Because it doesn't belong there. <laughs> it's not supposed to be there. You're supposed to read it from the alerter. Um and it makes more room it just it's just it's clearly um we we had we 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 added the realism for the the border above and around the sides and it just clumps this all together when there's supposed to be a separation down the middle here um anyway so yeah i just that's why it's not fixing it because this is the armed one and we need to find the active one so i'm kind of confused because how come i don't have it I don't think we actually have it on this chart because it's not one of our modes. Um, I think... Okay. I think we just have it straight up. I think we have it straight up over here, just going straight in there, the information. So give me a second here. Isn't there a, a, an update? An update altitude, uh, act update uh, vertical out a vertical. Um, mode. Here's our up arrow, and there's our down arrow. That's right next to it. There is the reference value. Yeah, I'm getting close. Here we go. Um, we get it right here. Vertical speed, or we do selected altitude phase is one aha uh -huh. i think i found it reference value there it is yeah we just we we enter it straight in through here we don't have a mode for this okay so what we say is selected altitude phase must equal one um or put in the save um indicated value or the save alerter value we want indicated um, so it's not going to be just one it's going to be one oh not equal to one ah that's not true anymore two and zero so it's going to be hmm selected altitude phase we want one, two, and zero. So we just don't want. We only have three phases. Or, or the alerter value. So when we're flying along, Al. And we just use straight up altitude, okay? Like we're just gonna like put this alerter value on 3200, right? And we just decide 
okay let's go into altitude that's 2100 because we don't want that value there so that is on phase zero so it can be phase two or zero that's why we say don't use one so that's interesting there's nothing stopping it from working on two why the hell is it not working on two Come on. What's our time on the stream now? We're going to wrap this up here and then I'm going to try to put in a good hour and a half and then get a package out. It's about two hours now. Okay. So here is phase one and it's showing ALT 2000. So if I were to adjust this right now, you can see it's showing the alerter value, not the altitude value. And now, okay. And phase zero now showing. Hmm. One more time. Phase zero. So we're going to go into phase one, and it's showing the alerter value, which is fine. That's what we want right here, 2100. But like if we're ever just doing altitude, Al, we only want to show actually zero. So the reality is, I think I know what the problem is now. We need to, same thing where we, d we decided to... Um, to not have the flashing show up if the weather is strong it's only going to be um, if not equal to zero and then we fit and then temporarily I guess uh, I removed also down here I'll just leave it there for right now but I uh, disabled where the hell did it go disabled this I was looking through the Garmin manual there are times when they display a, an altitude down there in the bottom yeah but sometimes I wonder if that yeah but sometimes I wonder if that's just uh, three hmm. there the examples in the manual don't show up like they do in the actual real images that's one thing I've noticed they just given you a demonstration, so I just curious sometimes if it's uh for Z -Nav they do that. We're not we don't ha we're not we didn't implement Z -Nav, so All right, I think I got the code all back together. And we'll just do a couple tests now. So it's interesting, the live stream um, says the exact same topic as last time, like in the description, it like borrowed it from the last stream. Is that normal? That's weird. Just notice that. Can change it right now. Okay, let's see what happens. See, I like this better. It just says ALTS at the bottom. Much better. So, I know what's going on. 
Well, this is the ALTS is the one that is messing up. I know what it is now. That is... Phase one. So we we need that to show on phase one. We just don't want phase two. Okay. Fine. We'll do it on zero, one, and 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 that's it. And just not two because two. Why? Why do we even have this then? Why can't we just show it in all of these modes? Because sometimes it can't, it has to show, if we do a capture straight up, we have we can't show the alerter value, you have to show the indicated on zero. So, let's just make this zero. And then remove that. And now it'll show the alerter on every other mode. And indicate it on zero. I have a feeling too this indicated saved value is also got code on it and that's also preventing it from showing. So it doesn't even have a value unless we're not equal to one. Active vertical mode two, yes. Um, show a zero if it's not equal to one. So let's just make this zero as well. Okay, so now we're going to get indicated on Al on zero only because obviously we want indicated only when you are within the 50. And then you can show the alerter value on the other stages because the indicated would be wrong, if that makes sense. And then we're... Uh, show the with indicated, to show the indicated, it's going to be constantly changing. No, 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 well, no, because it's rounded, and it's only on when you're within the 50, and it's rounded to the nearest 100. Exactly. Nope. If you click the button, you want the indicator. So the whole purpose of this is, is that if we just select altitude at any time, then it's okay to show the indicated rounded off, but if we're capturing, like we're going to do right now, um... We can't show the indicated when you're captured within 300 feet because it'll be 300 feet off. So you're showing the alerter, which is what you're going for anyway. So now we're showing 2,000. It's showing this value. And then when we get within the 50, it'll swap over to the actual altitude, which we have to do because, it, like I said, if we weren't capturing... Ah, oh, look at that. What the hell? There's like a delay, it seems like. It seems... There's no timers in there anymore, are there? No, but that was weird. Like, it, uh... Here, hold on. I'm gonna watch this again. I... We kind of were climbing so fast there that time. I'm gonna... I'm gonna climb a little slower. Let me see. Where is phase right here? Okay.
everything's perfect here and uh, why does it say I'm in phase zero right now it should be in phase one that's impossible what the hell is it doing that's impossible wait all of these are zero wait what's going on this is broken all of a sudden <laughs> wait a minute why is my uh, local vars broken oh no 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 I disabled them uh, not impossible I guess I'm like, they're all broken. Okay, one of the advantages of having the altitude select armed altitude show is a lot of times it's hard to read the alert because if there's any sun or something on it, you can't read it. It's not as bright as the sun. Yeah, can you move your microphone a little closer? It's still saying, here. A lot of times I yeah. find it hard to read hard to read the alerter value because it's it's not bright and if there's sun or something on it, you can't read it. Yeah. I notice in this sim in this sim if it ain't overcast, it's so hard just to, it, you're blinded everywhere really a lot. Um but I mean in the real world that can happen too, but I just think it's a little over exaggerated. Alright. Um uh, so we're in phase one. So the question is, I'm gonna make, I can't make it more shallow because it's, it decides its own rate here. So, oh, there we go. That was a little better. It went right to 2000. All right. I'm gonna consider that fixed. It went through zero, but very quickly. Yes, it's, very it's very a quick. small delay, exactly. So we're gonna consider that fixed and we're not gonna worry about things like that. That's, uh, Okay, so I think this is going to make a good time to stop the stream and then um, alright, so I can tear up this little message here uh, Copilot airspeed needle and the uh, stall ESP I'm going to do as soon as I stop the stream and then I'm going to wrap up the package and send her out So, Looks pretty quiet over on the. Uh, oh, look, they. <laughs> These guys. So, how many accounts do these guys have if I already remove them? Maybe because it, you can remove them, but they come back. I have to hit timeout. I've never seen uh, these kind of uh, posts in the things uh, until today. That was the first time. I've never seen that before. It's amazing they don't get in trouble somehow. I, I don't understand. <laughs> I wonder, how, does anybody know how long timeout lasts for? Can't you just block them permanently? Or well, something? I'm what I'm doing right now is I'm actually putting them in timeout. But what I'm noticing is they have um, used like seven or eight different ones because um, every time I do one of them, there's still a bunch on there. Uh, so they've used over ten different counts here or something like that. That's some serious spamming.
so if I sit there and try to report them to it, I'd have to do it ten times. Yeah, I'm sure they've come up with ways to get around it. Anybody got any questions? Any, any Anything you'd like me to try with the autopilots? And um, another question is, we can do this right now before we close everything up. Do you guys want me to put in um, duplicate options for the PMS-50 so in case you're not happy with the logic until they fix it, then we, right now at least we can you can have the option of what uh, log autopilot logic you want to use. So let's go open up this here. So there's 11, 10, 9. So that's the uh, XI. We'll copy 8, 7, 6. Paste that here. And that's going to become... come back up here and we're going to set these three to a new folder. So we're going to create a copy of this folder, but we're going to call it GTN750 underscore WT. come over here to panel and change these three. Oh. One, two. Wait a minute. How did I get out of the order here? Nine, ten, eleven. But that's the next I. What the hell? Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Okay. XI 14, XI 13, XI 12. So how the hell did I get... <laughs> I must have copied these three wrong. Let's do this again. Let's get rid of these three. Copy. That's an XI. You know, I wonder if... Wait a minute, hold on. I, wonder... I got a problem. Go um... Okay, the, that's a 750XI, a 750XI, and a 750XI. How is there three XIs in a row, but then there's an XI right here? Oh, there's four. There's four for each livery. I forgot. There's not three liveries. There's four liveries. Okay. So let me do my math here again. I messed up. I was going to say... Instead of just using XI and then nothing with the other 750, if you put PMS in one name and TDS in the other name, I think it, people would be very clear to people. Okay. Four, five, six, seven. Paste here. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now we go down to the, the new section. Twelve. Fourteen, fifteen. That's it. 
okay because uh, it ends on 16 because it starts on 0 so now we can come up here change this to underscore WT 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 okay so how are they going to see this in the name? We have to change the name. So you were talking about the name, Al. We can put... Yeah, I would say right now they have to remember that if there's no XI, it's the PMS, and if there is an XI, it's the TDS. But if you put TDS in the name and put PMS in the name, it would be very clear which one is which. Yeah. It also gets pretty length. It also gets pretty lengthy, and so like if we go back to the menu right now and take a look, we can see how it yeah, displays we'll in there. Yeah, let's see what it looks like because yeah. I don't know exactly what's going to be. Take the XI out though. If you put the TDS in, you could take out the XI. Yeah, we got plenty of room. Look at that. Okay, so let's go um, 750 PMS. PMS750. Well, PMS50 is the that's the company. And then GTN750 yeah. plus WT. Now, I'm kind of skeptical on putting symbols or a space here. I think I'm just going to put I can try doing a plus sign and see what happens. It may allow us. This is a title, so I might be able to get away with that. So we're going to find out right now. So we're going to go here. Underscore, under, underscore WT. Yeah, but we're just going to find out right now. It may break it, it may not, and then we'll see what happens. Um, okay, let's go up to these original ones. We're going to go PMS 50. PMS 50. Okay, and then we'll go all the way down to the bottom. And see. Are you going to keep it in this way, or is it just for a, for a while to, to test it? Well, I mean, keep if you it. think about it, why not keep it? Because it gives everybody the choice of what kind of autopilot logic they like. If if you don't like one, use the other one. I mean, they are going to improve it, and that will be nice, but um, some people might just be so used to the other autopilot, they don't get the new one, or vice versa. They just could not handle even using the other one. So, um how long will it take them to fix it? It could be a while. So for right now, it's just, I don't know. I don't have an answer to that question. Um, TDS, sure TDS, we can't offer the working title. Uh, the working title doesn't make one for them, and they can't anyways, because even if they did, it would make the whole TDS completely not work anymore, because TDS oh. uses K-Events, and working title logic blocks the K-Events from talking to the sim. Then they send that K event to the WASM, and then the WASM uses their new logic, and then they send it back through the AVAR to the SIM. And you can talk to the SIM through AVARs now. And that's how they got around this whole old-school autopilot logic. If that's going to be become the default, it might be wise for TDS to be working on uh, an update. Well, but TDS already explained that He's there's nothing that he can do because this is an external, oh, yeah. uh, this is an external uh, program that uses the real actual uh, uh, Logitech yeah. or not Logitech. What am I thinking of the you know the uh, trainer? It he uses the real trainer, the Garmin, Garmin uh, trainer. Yeah, and so yeah. he has to be. Uh, he has to read the K events, so. But. But that doesn't mean that he can't put it back through the A-bars just like Working Title does. So he just might have to... I don't know. I, I don't know. It goes above my pay grade uh, when it comes to... And I don't think Garmin... Garmin doesn't know any... The Garmin trainer, I don't think, knows anything about K-events. Their trainer is... Oh. Uh, is a, is a, is a stand, it's a standalone thing, I think. They didn't need to go low to flight. We just wanted to go back to the livery <laughs> choices. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. I, I don't even know if I resync when I was in here, so let's do a resync. 
We must have. Oh, I think we broke it. Okay. Oh, wait. Yeah, I think we broke it. No. One, two, three, four. Okay, we got 12 now. So we got 530. Um, oh, so you know what? It's not looking at the name and the title. The title is only for me. It's looking at... Hmm, that's interesting. Description or something like this. Yeah, it's looking at the... Uh, you should have 16 total, right? It may be putting... Oh, the variation. There it is. It's right there. The title you also have to make unique, or it, uh, I think it gets conf uh, it gets mad. But then again, I don't know with this new sim, so uh, for now I'll just keep it consistent. Come on, variation. Just have to update their liveries now if they want to uh, support that. There'll be 16 liveries, won't there? Four for the. the liv there's only four liveries. The, f the liveries never change. You're just getting your. You're but choosing your panels that. and liveries at the same time. So, yes, there's 16 choices. Yeah. But the delivery makers which created their own liveries have to do the same as you have done here. And update deliveries. Oh, I just messed up down here. You know what I did? I put the TDS in front of the number, damn it, instead of here. What what did you say? Sorry. Okay. Well, all the guys who create their own liveries have to do the same as you have. Probably not even working because I haven't seen anyone post in a while. Reconnected. The YouTube live stream just kind of like uh, buffers a bit and then it continues. It's still up. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I have a feeling we're going to have to leave and come back like this. Come back. And then it will update. Let's try... It's just not we're not reading the right spot. Um, okay, another way to check this is to load into the sim and then do a, a resync and then come back because it may not just be it may not be resyncing and it also might not like that plus sign <laughs> now that that's in the uh, not in the title section. Underscore. Yeah, and it might, and the sim could crash too, uh, if it gets pissed off at, when you do stuff like that too. It'll just crash on you. Okay, if this if this takes a second, yep, it's now it's updating. Yeah, you you can't. Sometimes you can't resync if you already are in the hangar, and then you make a change. You have to you have to go back in the flight and then come back. So that's what it was. And then we can also check it right here. So now it says PMS 50, GTN 750 plus WT right there. 
TDS XIs and the regulars and the 530. So beautiful. There we go. Oh, so what we have to do now, let me uh, close this up. Close that up. We actually have to go over to the working title, no, not the working title one, the non-working title and remove the autopilot for it here. Which means we're going to have to go back in the flight and resync. So this is what it's like for those Twitch. The tw I always say I like to say Twitchers, but they're not Twitchers. The Twitch streamers uh, streaming for three hours. It's yeah, it gets tiring. It's been a while. Um, So we ended up changing logic that wasn't actually on here. Um, and we also said now to not use zero if it's not on zero. Let me think here a second. Two to six. And actually, it's the opposite. It's equal to zero. Let me think. What did I end up doing here for the phase? That's oh we ended up disabling this this whole line of code right here. Um, hmm. I wonder. Okay, we have another thing to do. We have to go back to the main menu. So that takes care of the... Nope, I still have those two fixes to do. Damn. Never ends. It never ends. Um... So I have not released 2.4 yet, so let's just change the date here to the 21st. I gave it out as a test to the beta team. Anybody uh, want to hear some cool features that are coming this week? Let her rip. We've got, uh, let me show you guys with a visual here. The poor YouTubers, they're not going to see it though. We have a very cool surprise here. We've updated the accuracy on, well, two things. We've updated, one is we updated the accuracy. You guys can see, can you guys see my screen? You can see this? In yes. Dis in Discord? Yep, okay. 
So not only have we updated the accuracy on these boots, but these are the old ones right here. Um, you'll see that this is kind of tapered. Uh, all of them are actually parallel. So we've updated that, but the surprise is, I'm sure you could guess, not only are we going to get more realistic textures on the boots, but we actually have animated boots coming. Cool. And there's actually also a brand new wind vane right here. And it's very mm -hmm. nicely modeled by our partner Red Render House. One of our uh, Lysonware guys. Now, there is a downside to this new animated boots, and I'd like to get your guys' opinion. We can either A, still have the boots cycle in the order they're supposed to cycle in, which would be the vertical stabilizer, the horizontal stabilizer, the right wing, and then the left wing, and then just have the ice all break off at the last stage, <laughs> or somewhere in the middle, or somewhere in the beginning, or we could just have all the boots go at the same time and then have the ice come off when you when you actually see the boots come up. So make your choice because you can't have both. More limitations. <laughs> what would you how rather fast see? Would it go, how fast would it go through that cycle that you're talking about? Okay, well, the speed of one of them is actually... So if you can see my screen here. So if you can see my screen here. The speed of it filling up is about like that right there of one of them. Well, maybe more like that. So it's going to be kind of like boom. That would be one cycle. And then maybe there's like a second between that one and the next one starting. And then a second there. So it'll be like boom, 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 boom. Five, four seconds, five seconds for the whole thing maybe. Five or six seconds. So I was thinking we could break the ice off on the last stage or maybe even somewhere in the middle and then at least still have it animate correctly, right? Which would be kind of important and not worry about the ice coming right. off. But the thing is, is that it's going to be rare when you're flying with ice anyways. I mean, there, it is pretty... You have to really hit the right situations to get the ice. But at least the realism's there for these kinds of boots because... um. It's not set up for a, um, a leading edge where it melts. So it actually does build up with ice, and when you run the switch, it will kick the ice off the leading edges. So it is visually pleasing. <laughs> but, uh, again, you can't, we can't make it so the ice breaks off one at a time unless we did visibility tags on each one of them. But the downside with that is... The boot would be literally super clean, and right now we have it to where it's like it leaves a little bit of like residue leftovers in a way, kind of. So it doesn't completely remove all of the ice. So it looks a little bit more realistic. So I kind of prefer that um, than just doing visibility tags. Um, so, yeah. Oh, the poor YouTubers. No, I don't know. I think it'd be okay. Even if even if you had it come off at the end, would probably still work because your last section... If it does come off late while you're watching outside the view on the others, you could say, well, it's... Right, well, I'm going to shut this stream off for YouTube. We're not leaving Discord, but... Um, anybody have any... Is there any questions or anybody posting over at YouTube right now? Let's see. Wow, those guys just do not give up. I mean, we've timed them. I don't know how long timeouts work, but... <laughs> well, yeah, that that one guy yeah, saying... Well... Anyways, yeah, the only thing I can say to, to do... <sighs> to maybe to look into that is see what other YouTubers uh, probably have done stream... Uh, not streams, videos on it and what you can do to stop these guys. So maybe there's an answer to it. Just have to look into it. So anyways, let's close this stream here. So go back over here. End stream.